Out of my whole life's been try or die. True. I'm just trying to glow up looking like a firefly. Yeah. Life is fly- Two. One. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we're back after a little bit of time off. This is Frank and Jules podcast, episode number 21. Uh, we have a very special, uh, special guest today. We have Joshua Pollitt. Um, he's a business owner. He's an actor. He's an entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, and he's just doing, he's doing a lot of everything. So he's from Camden, New Jersey originally. Um, and he's, uh, he was listed on the top 10 most influential people on a Yahoo finance in 2020. Um, and we're really honored to, uh, have you on the show, man. How you doing today? My brother, I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you for, uh, you know, just having me here. And the introduction, man, yo, I appreciate that. And, you know, it's like this. I feel great, but just knowing the fact that I'm here with good folks like you and your other, you know, partner, I feel better. Thank you, bro. Thank you. You're welcome, man. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just for, so for people that don't know a lot about you, um, could you kind of, like, take us through, uh, like, as I was researching your background and everything, uh, so you were born in Camden, and is that where – uh, everything started like as far as just like growing up yes yeah, yeah. so uh, how how was it like that because i saw that it, it, one of the articles i read about you it, it said that you were at one point like homeless so i wanted to hear about like how that even came about and how you even get out of that at that point <clears throat> all right i appreciate you brother and i'm talking to this is frank right yeah frank yeah Frank. okay frank so frank long story short man um first and foremost like i said i'm from Camden, new jersey um, if anybody doesn't know, if you're watching and listening to this podcast, Camden, New Jersey, at one point was the most was the worst city in the country. Um, dangerous as far as violence, crime, you know, city per capita, um, crime per capita, if that makes sense. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, coming from there, I learned a lot. I never I never even spoke this proper, man. I, and that only became uh, possible because of books and my father's influence, my mother's strictness, you know, my whole family. Uh, ordeal living in East Camden and South Camden. So it's like, um, that was just something else. Um, but coming into, as, 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 as far as coming up into where I am today, uh, how can I put this? It just, it's just Camden. Uh, Camden is one of those cities where it's like, uh, it's not New York, it's not Atlanta, it's not DC, it's not LA, it's not Chicago. Camden is a, is a, is a one of a kind. Um, I can't even put it in, in words, man. It's like, it's family. But it's also violence. It's, it's like it's a mixture of everything. It's, it's almost like a, a movie, all put in one. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll cut to, to the chase. Speaking on like chase, like Chase Street. Um, you know, shout out to my uncle Nate, who's actually uh, who's actually um operating that that TV series that's coming out, Chase Street. But um, to get yeah, oh yeah, yeah, man. Um, but to get to the point, bro, to answer your question, homelessness. It came about when I when I was um after grad school. I was in grad school from 2014 to 2016 at Mansfield University of Pennsylvania. And let's just say, let's put it like this. I was going through some stuff. I actually did some time. I was, um, I was locked up for, for some stuff that I did. Um, you know, if, if you want to, so to speak, if you want to say that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's already over and done with. Now I'm taking care of it. But what I'm trying to say is following that, uh, not to get too long winded, because I know I want to hear all of your questions you have, bro. Trust me. But oh, no, yeah, to- take your time. <laughs> yeah, take your time. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> appreciate it, Frank. Appreciate it. Um, so um, to be honest with you, homelessness, if that's if you want to get cut to the chase, um, that came from when I was in grad school and following grad school, I had some stuff going on after I was, you know, so called, you know, I I got caught up. Like I said, I did some time for some some things that I was a part of, um, things that I've done when I was in grad school, I should have been doing. And um and I'll be honest with you. And I mean, you can you can Google it. I did something that that was involving with no drugs, and you know, I I, I take the blame, and it's always over and done with now. But whatever. But, but what I'm saying is this: following that, I had to basically leave that school. I had to leave that 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 place where I was living at, and I had nowhere to go. It's not that I had nowhere to go, but the rhetorical question people would say is, "Well, where's your family? Where's your where's your siblings? And where where are they at? Why can't they house you?" That's a whole nother story. And um, it's sad, man. It's sad um, that you would think that you can rely on certain people to actually let you live and help you out to get you off, off your, you know, get you to help you get off your, you know, get on your feet, you know. Um, but, you know, outside of that, uh, some of those op- options weren't available. 
And I came home, I was actually at my grandpa's house, but things weren't going so well. And then I had to leave and, you know, it was, it was just so much going on, man. And trust me, I can get deep into it. I can get, I can get deep into it if I really wanted to. But um, it's just like a lot of things weren't, weren't happening. I don't know if it was like, God's like, Josh, you got, I got to put you through this for the great things to come. Um, so I was like hopping here and there. It was time I stepped outside. I, yo, I slept at the waterfront outside in Camden on the, um, on the, uh, was supposed to have like a, a bench. I slept on a bench with my boy. And uh, my boy, he's doing well in life. He has a son. Um, but what I'm saying is um, I slept with him outside. Uh, he said he was on one bench. I was on one bench. I slept on my boy's, uh, on my boy's front porch. Uh, be just because, you know, uh, there's there's certain family members and friends who you think that has your back, but they actually don't. Um, you would think that it'll let you stay there or whatever, and it just didn't work out. And there was other, other people I could have relied on, um, but they had families and stuff. So it was like, I, I guess I, because I went through that, it was teaching me a lot, and I had to go through that. Because if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be where I'm at where I'm today. My mindset when I've had not had changed the discipline that I have when I've had, have not been structured and um in, into the possibilities of all the things that I'm accomplishing today, all of the achievements. So it's like you have to shatter at rock bottom to go what you're going through. Because when you shatter at rock, when you shatter at rock bottom like like a like a vase, a vase that breaks, you will think that someone's gonna put them pieces together, but sometimes you have to put it together yourself. Uh so it's gonna be it's gonna be a long yeah uh so yeah you're saying like you basically you were kind of like going towards rock bottom or whatever yeah you felt like you had to go to that point to really like rise up from it yep yeah and, and i'll say this man um uh i'm not, I'm not i don't want to put no people's name out there but you know like i said just my siblings and family i mean i mean my brother's in california he would have helped me but he's way in california but i knew that there was a purpose for me to still be on the east coast here in, in the tri-state area Philadelphia, Jersey, New York, Delaware area, you know, so it's like, I had to stay here. Something inside me was telling me, stay here, go through what you got to go through. It's going to work out. Something was telling me bigger things are coming. Just keep, it was an inner voice. Something was saying bigger things are coming. Despite your situation, the illusion of how things look, you may not have this, you may be uh, not living in a nice place, or you might not even have no place to live or a good job. Just keep working towards it and you'll do it. And the whole time I, um, I just kept running. I kept running forward, man. Um, <laughs> bro, I was like I said, I was sleeping on people's porches, my, my friends, my boy's porch, because I couldn't stay in his house because he had a family, and I respected that. I was doing what I had to do because where I was at before, a few places where I was at before, they had bed bugs, they had roaches. It was a disaster, bro. I seen it all, man. Um, it's Camden, South Jersey, bro. It's it's, uh, it's one of a kind. Only the, the week is not for Jersey, or especially if you're from the inner city. The week, yeah, um, the, the the week is not for Jersey, especially if you're going through shit. It's, that it's not and you i'm pretty sure you can understand that but um yeah and you know bro, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i know <laughs> yeah and then so so yeah i, I was in, like I, said, I was homeless and then um going through that i was sleeping like i said you already know what i said stepped outside i was sleeping at the waterfront i was going through some stuff i was just sleeping on the floor in my grandpa's house and he, my grandpa passed away he got really sick um it, it's just it was a lot man um i was going here and there and there and here it was just it was all over the place um like i said i could go a whole, a whole hour to break it all down if you wanted to but i, I we don't have that time i know we don't but um what, I, what i'm saying is like i just uh i never gave up most people would give up most people will fold most people will fold man they'll crack they'll break i didn't give up i kept going i said well i'm gonna die one day so i'm doing i'm gonna keep going so i said just keep going and at some point I'm going to reach the promised land. I'm Joshua. Like Joshua in the Bible, I'm going to reach the promised land. I kept going, bro. Kept going. I didn't give up. Kept going. And I'm here today to tell you that if you give up, you'll just remain stagnant. Why the hell would you want to remain stagnant? I remember I remember Pat Poos, the rapper, said second place is the first loser. But you know what? Even a person that, that's in second place is still going because at some point, he's going to be able to see how the first place does it. He's going to study him if he's willing enough and he'll beat the first place winner the next time. So you got to keep going. Cause if you remain stagnant, you're going to remain stagnant. You'll be staying there wondering why everybody's passing you and you'll, you'll start developing envy and jealousy of other people when you don't really need that. Cause that's your fault. So it's like, like I said, I was going through a lot, man. And I'm here now, man. And um, I got, I got more stories to, to explain to you like quickly, you know, I'm sorry, more briefly to explain how I got to where I got to influential and all of that. But, um, other than that, man, I'm just, I work hard, bro, for everything that I've, I'm, I've done because I'm no one who was trying to help me, really. People were helping me, but no one was really helping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, dude. It's, it's crazy, man. Like, so when you first uh, went to college, did you have like um, a vision or like a dream of what you wanted to do afterwards? Like what did, what did you end up studying like in the grad at grad school? Okay. Um, you, you're Frank and uh, my yeah. brother, mind if I um, start a little bit before that, just to tell oh, you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So something I didn't mention was um, shout out to Gina Pollitt, my mother, big ups to Gina Pollitt, my mother, you know, because of her, because of my mom, I am where I am today. No cap, no lies. I could cry. Shout out to Gina Pollitt, my mother, me madre. Um, yeah. for she took me and my okay, so here, 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 here's a quick one. This I swear to goodness, I love this man. I love this show, man. You got some good questions, bro. Y'all are y'all are the best. Y'all are the best. <laughs> y'all are the best. Y'all are the best. We're trying. Jules, 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 what's up, Jules? What's up, bro? If you can hear me. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> right. Swear to God, this is the best. It's the best one. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get to the point. I promise. Long story short, it was August 1st, 2002. My mother came and got me and my brother Donald from Camden. And um, me and my brother were living at my, my late grandmother's house. My late grandmother's house, right in peace, you know? And um, we were going through a lot of stuff as, as some kids. We weren't really getting the, uh, the support and love, um, the empathy that one should get from their aunts or, you know, you know, you get what I'm saying? Or their elder yeah. folk. Um, Nothing, you know, not to talk bad or nothing, but it's just, um, I had one of my aunts at the house who wasn't really, who was really mean. She was really evil, saying now the whole nine yards. And me and my brother were there with not, with, like, without our mother. It's like being, um, um, uh, let's just say a cub without their, the, the mother bear. So it's like, me and my brother are there. I'm, I'm, I was, sorry for, sorry for speaking too fast and stuttering. I was 12. I'm just excited to speak about this. I was 12, my brother was 10. And we're like, where's mom? Our mother was in Pennsylvania. We didn't know the best thing, but we were just going through a lot. So at the end of the day, we were kind of homeless as well. We were basically living with our our um our grandmother and our um our aunt and our grandfather and them, and we were living in the basement. It was crazy. We we're ten and twelve years old in Camden. This is what nineteen. I'm sorry, this was two thousand one, two thousand two. Think about that, man. Just just think about what's going through our minds. You know, as young kids, this goes on all over the place. I can imagine Chicago, L.A. I can imagine Dallas, wherever. But what I'm saying is that this is our particular moment and going through this we're like yo we gotta get out of here we was calling our moms it was we were have to go to bed at 4 30 go down in the basement i had to, you know sometimes we it was just a lot we was going through bro i'm like yo this ain't cool so we called our mom our mom went out of her way came and got us we took everything on our back i had like a little small bag like a little trash little uh bag you get, you get from the corner store but they were flexing with a little bit of clothes my brother barely had anything just life life began that's where I began to get to like where I am today, 2002, August 1st, Hazleton, Pennsylvania. My mom took us up there. Um, to, to speed forward to it, my mother, uh, just, just by that transition to going to Hazleton, it was a culture shock because Hazleton, PA at that time was a predominantly white area, if that makes sense. And um, it was, there was some Spanish and Blacks there, but it was a predominantly white area, especially the high school and the schooling. So I had to adjust, I had to assimilate to that culture. Um, not by way of ethnocentrism, but by a way of just like knowing that I had to fit in and I had to do what I had to do to survive and to get where I had to get because I have such an um uh, an astounded view on life and I'm like yo, I gotta get I gotta get to my goal. So it's like inward. I always had this view of like knowing where I had to go, but I had to basically know physically I gotta adjust to this surrounding by any means necessary and do what I have to do to fit in and get in and get out. It's almost like I was going covert. You know, at a young age, I was like, I was that mentally psychological. I was, I was that, I was a bad boy. I was going covert in the surroundings that I was messing with. And people didn't know that because I was so good at doing it. Um, so it's like, I, but I, I naturally I was, a, I was more so into knowing how to balance and mirror others, uh, you know, emotions and, 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 and values because I had empathy. So my mother took us out of that, 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 that threshold in South Jersey in Camden and we got out of that. Um, so because of being Hazleton, I became what you would call, um, I turned, I transformed into this, this new being of a, a young black male in America. I became um, what you would call uh, a young political figure at such a young age. I became the class president of the, of the, of the high school, which was predominantly white. Um, I, I, I played football, ran track. I did a lot of things. I was, um, I was the, the, the head leader of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the um, sorry, the, the newspaper club at, at the high school, the head writer, you know, which is why I got the magazine out. Um, so I was, there was like, I was transforming uh, into, into like a potential 
that that was hidden, a hidden potential that I never knew. Thank, thankfully for my mother for bringing us up. And my younger brother became one of the best, the greatest track and field athletes, not only in high school, but in the country in high school. Um, yeah, so it's like that whole area just transformed me and him. So it was like God or something had this plan for us and we had to go up there to fulfill that. Now, college, I was in high school. I was a good athlete in football track. I said, you know what, where am I going to school? Um, I really want to go to Michigan, which is why I got this on right now. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I love Michigan. Go blue, go blue. Um, <laughs> we don't have we don't have a state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to, to get to the point, um, college, I went to Mansfield. I went to Geneva College, which was my first college. I studied theater there. Um, found my way into acting. That's where acting started. I um, actually, when I was in high school, I was a part of the theater club, the theater, you know, acting. And um, I, I first my first act was in Mash. My brother and my friends could tell you I was in Mash. And um, we were all young in Mash. I was Spirit Chucky Jones, and um, had some small parts. And then with the college, to study theater was my concentration under communications, and it just went on from there. And then after that, transferred to Mansfield University of Pennsylvania because of some situations I had. And then going to Mansfield and grad school, um, that's kind of um where I became being what I what I, I am today. Uh, just the reading, I got books right here, like I said, and um, just um, I became who I am today, man, because of that. The people I was around, the situations, everything that I evolved from. But um, not to, not to be redundant or to re to re uh, ask you the question. You were asking me something about grad school and how that came about, correct? Oh yeah, just yeah, just like uh, were you like what you majored in and why and like why why you did that? Okay, so when I got to Mansfield, um, you know, coming from Geneva College because I fell out. And I actually broke my leg playing college football. Um, when I got to Mansfield, when I transferred over there, uh, I may, I was still majoring in communications, but Mansfield had organizational communications. And this is where this is where the whole plot thickens, if you want to say this within this, this, uh, this podcast. Um, when I was majoring in communications, um, it was organizational communications. It wasn't your average communications uh, you know, uh, platform or program. It was a program where you learned and I'll say it again, you learned not only communications, communications theory, but you also learned persuasion. You know how to be persuasive. You also learned basically influence. You learned marketing, you learned branding. I can go on and on and on. It was like communications in a, in a, uh, in a brand, in a crazy nutshell, man. It was, it was different, it changed me. Um, uh, one of our, our professors, out of all of them, all of the professors were great at Mansfield University. It was dope, um, be a Burnham, who was one of the highlight professors? Shout out to Bea Burnham, Professor Burnham. Um, she, uh, we had a class with what was it? Gr uh, communication groups communicate group communications, I believe. Where we learned how to be in group skills, how to work in groups, how to um, basically uh, uh, just basically learn how to influence people. Learning how to uh, let's say you're let's say you're in a, a company um, and you um in the beginning before you guys go into the office or into the field, you guys get into uh what's what's, what's it called? What you call um. Uh, basically, what is it called? What is it called? Like, uh, train, I can't think. like training. <laughs> uh, uh, like oh, uh, you go out, you go out, and not in the field. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking okay. about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we all, we, right? We will all do things. We would do things where um, I forgot what the name is, but but basically, we will all do uh like little uh, games in the in the morning and uh testing each other, like you know, challenging each other. It was I forgot what it's called. I can't get the name, but anyway, we did that. Um, but that that major, uh, that that is what solidified me as to being who I am today. That major alone, and me being a communicative sort of person, man, um, it was everything, man. Like I mean, just uh, oh yeah, shout out to Dr. Su, Su Young, Dr. Su Young, who was the number one professor at that college. We had a class that dealt with business and professionalism. We had interviews in class. Uh, we had interviews with her. We did it all. Sorry, it's my cat. She she wants to be on the camera. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> My little baby Zena right here. But um, yeah. So um, yeah, man. So it, it, and that whole major, basically, uh, influenced and made me who I am today. Uh, just the people in in the interactions. Um, yeah, it was it was Dr. Alyssa. If uh, you know, she she was a great you know professor as well. She taught me a lot of communications theory. How the how your best input is your best output. Uh, basically, thinking about thinking about thinking the metacognition. Uh, you have to think more than like three times before you do anything, before you react. Once you react, you got to be proactive upon your, upon your reaction. 
So it was like that really taught me a lot, man. Um, I still make mistakes, but that uh, that school alone and that just that and major helped me when I went to grad school. I went to grad school for organizational um, organizational leadership, and because of organizational leadership, is more so what grasped me to where I am today, as far as like really uh, just getting me where I am. Because I learned a lot about the C-suite, CEO, COO, CFO, things I never knew about, things that most people don't wouldn't even know about unless they learned that. And um, so that that's helped me a lot. Uh, just 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 doing that. Um, I actually wrote a, di a, dissert a dissertation on on some things, man. Uh, something I never thought I would write about. But you know, like I said, to get to the point, to answer your question, uh, my good brothers, basically that alone, that that program alone, is is what actually helped me and made me in where I am today. And that that school alone. Um, as well as, you know, my other friends there. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and that, and that, that's what, that's what's got me to where I am. Organizational communications and organizational leadership. Just um, basically knowing the product of being organized and everything that you do, communicating and leading. Because if you can do that, you can master that. People will love you. People will, will um, flock to you, you know, because you're natural, you're genuine, you're authentic, and you're transparent. And if you can be like that, people will say, you know what? He's not saying something I agree with, but he's being real. Or vice versa. So, gotcha, man. Yeah, nice. Thanks, brother. And yeah, and then so, how did you end up starting uh, like East Coast Magazine? Like, when did that come into play? Was that shortly? Huh. Was that before school, after school, or like in more recent times? That's a great question, bro. That's crazy. You asked that. That's a great question. <laughs> um, stranger than fiction. East Coast Magazine started not only when I was in grad school, but it started as an idea. Um, like I said, when I, when I was in high school, I was a part of, a, you know, the newspaper club in high school. And when I got to college, I just, I like to write. It's weird. It's just, it was like something about me to write, something about writing. I just never, like, at some point, at one point, I didn't like writing, but um, I, was, I was writing because I was good at it. And I, I just, it was something for me to express myself. But when I was in college, I joined the Flashlight. The Flashlight was the newspaper club at Mansfield University of Pennsylvania. And being a pond that, um, I mean, I, I, was, I, was, I was a part of the Flashlight in undergrad in Mansfield before I graduated, and I was a part of it in grad school. But in grad school, one evening or one night, I was at home or something, if I can remember. And something came upon me, and it said, East Coast Magazine. Swear to God and everything that I love. One lot. Frank, Jules, I was like, Wait a minute, that sounds like something that's gonna be big. And I'm sitting there, I'm just a regular grass, grass, grad school student. I'm just like, um, you know, I barely have any kind of money. I got I'm working hard. I work like two or three jobs just to pay my rent off campus and to do this and feed myself. I'm just like, what is that? So I went about it. I I created the uh the Instagram page. I came across one of my friends, her name is Anna. Um, she's she's somewhere in Pennsylvania, she's a good friend. She helped me design a logo. I created the, the initial idea of ECM with the East Coast on, uh, around the M and the colors and the mountain. If you look at the mountain, like, like the Appalachian Mountains and the mountains on the East Coast and then the waves because of the, the East Coast. So I, I designed all of that, but she physically did everything on the, uh, you know, on her software. So she helped me out a lot. Shout out to Anna. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what happened. And I, I had that idea. I went forward with it. Uh, days turn to months, I'm sorry, days turn to weeks, weeks turn to months, and months turn to eventually a year and years after 2014, which is when circa when I came up with the idea, with the idea, 2014 to 2015. Next thing you know, I graduated. Um, and next thing you know, next thing you know, I come across my boy, Eric Gilchrist, who's also a good brother of mine. He's actually the CFO now. And I came across him in 2017 at an event, a social event at his school, Rutgers University and in Camden. And long story short, he was, I told him, well, I remember exchanging a you know, handshake, talking to him. And I told him uh, you know, what I was doing. And then the magazine part came, his eyes blew up. Uh, but she was like, whoa, are you serious? I said, yeah, man, I'm not playing, I'm not playing on games. Um, which at the, at the same time, it was still, you know, just a social media thing, which is what I was working on, you know, because I'm the founder. And next thing you know, me and Eric got it together, worked hard, got some ideas put in place, got a team together, and things went here. Some people of the team, of the, of the original team, are not here anymore. 
But, you know, that goes on, that goes along with any kind of company or business. And, you know, some people stay, some people leave, some people uh, transition to a better job and, you know, they did their time because nothing's permanent. Everything's temporary. So me and, um, me and Eric, we made it happen. And then we got along with bringing along Shaquan Bird, who is now the COO. Got along bringing my, my man, number two, my boy, Jordan Bennett. And, you know, he's a web content design strategist, as well as the director of the sports, you know, our, our sports program. And um, we just got it together, man. We got more people now and we're working it out. And um, and that's just what happened, man. Um, like I said, I was going through a lot of crazy shit. I never thought I would be here, man. It was times where I thought I was going to die. It was times where I was, and I was drinking like crazy. I used to be a toxic drinker, not an alcoholic, but a toxic drinker. Like I, whenever I drank, let's say I drank two weeks, every two weeks. I drank crazy, you know, I did some crazy stuff. And, um, you know, so it's like, I had to make a change. I had to slow things down and just get better in life. And that's what it was. Um, like I said, that magazine, this magazine actually changed my life because if I didn't do this or have a productivity with this, who knows what I would be doing? Who knows what kind of girls or what I would be involved with, man. So it's like, um, it really helped me, man. And um, that's, that's how I got started. And that's where we are today. We started, I started reaching out. I read a lot of books. I got books next to me now on how to um, learn about people, how to understand people. And that's how I was able to get um, the, the, the people that we feature on our covers uh, and people that we featured and wrote stories about. And that, you know, so it's like that. that and that's how I've accomplished a lot of things. But, um, to answer your question, my brother, not to be too long-winded, that's how East Coast Magazine got started and when, and now it's off ground. And we're about almost three years in being off ground, off ground, you know. But outside of that, I had the idea and had it, I founded it. Fourteen circa, and I just um been just basically been adding and building ever since then. Um, because I'm like where I came from, I'm thinking like it's kind of like Steve Harvey. If you're going through hell, think about this. If you're going through hell, in the words of Steve Steve Harvey, if you're going through hell, why the hell would you stop in hell? You better keep like why would you stop in hell? That's being stagnant. Mm. You don't know what's going to end, but if you want to get out of here, it may not be. It may be five years. It may be five minutes. Let's keep going yeah. until you get. Yeah, man. So, sorry. Go ahead, <laughs> oh, no, no, you're fine, man. Um, bro, I know that's crazy, man. You should be proud of yourself because, uh, yeah, like for you to get out of that situation, uh, have a tough upbringing, and then come out on the winning side is just incredible. I think, I think more people need to know about stories like this because, uh, especially like in a rough neighborhood or whatever, like you don't, um, it's not always talked about. I mean, obviously a lot of times it's, it's an athlete most of the time or something, or it's a celebrity that maybe they'll have those story. Their story will be more known because of who they are, but um, it's cool to hear your background because it's just, it's important to hear that. It's like, cause I so to let other people know that they can get out of their circumstances if they do have something tough to deal with. Cause like, I can't even imagine. Cause like, I, I always say to people like, it's kind of like a thing, like, where did you wake up? Like, where were you born? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot, everybody has a different, type of path and like some people have it easier than others and i think like i've definitely taken stuff for granted myself like i've I, like i never had like when you talked about stuff you went through um like i didn't really have to deal with that like most of that stuff man i just i i happened to grow up in a good neighborhood like happened to yeah have this stuff and like um i think sometimes i have to look at stories like that like yours and like other uh it, it, whether it would be and like for me also it would be like sometimes when I listen to when I'm listening to music or whatever it could be like a rapper right. or could be somebody that you hear them talk about stuff and you're like okay like yeah it's like probably like, I like <laughs> I thought I had a bad day I was like no nah, that guy's got like he's got like some you might have months or years who knows what it is like so uh it's all good it's all good bro trust me I I, I respect I don't mean to cut it. I respect it man like I did just to be able to talk to you and to be on this podcast man we've all had struggles and we've all had umbringings upbringings where we went through things man so you know it's, it's crazy because you could have had grew up in like uh with a silver spoon in your mouth even if you did yo either way i just appreciate your good energy and just knowing that who you are and the fact that you have what you have going on you got a podcast you seem like a good guy you seem like a very empathic person you're listening man like just you and joe's like i could just feel the energy so I'm, I'm happy to be here man you know it's like everybody has their own reasons to go through what they're going through from the bottom up up bottom whatever because they have to experience things and their sole purpose on earth so, bro, I respect the fact that, like, you're just doing what you're doing, man. And I, I give thanks, man, because any day we can go. So thank you, bro. Real talk. I don't mean to cut in, but I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. 
no, no Josh, you. you're, you're all you're, you're very good. But I think for me personally, what I, w- I would like to know more about is so based on your career that I've seen, uh, you've done a lot of things like you're an entrepreneur, um, you know, having a magazine and things of that nature. But then now you're you're included with guys like Jay Shetty on Yahoo's you know top ten like influential people. So can you just kind of give us a a breakdown of like how that kind of came about essentially? Okay, so all right, here we go. All right, boom, 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 boom. All right, so long story. <laughs> all right, so how can I put this in a in a nutshell? Shout out to Dylan Kivo. Do you guys know who that is? No, I personally don't know. No, I'm sorry. Dylan Kivo is America's number one PR go-to guy. He owns Kivo Daily. He's also just, he's just one of those guys where he has, um, he's very affluent and he's just, he's a PR guy all across the boards. Um, so I was basically, in other words, I was basically helping him and, you know, basically supporting him and his endeavors and his brother, Daniel Kivo. Shout out to Daniel Kivo and shout out to Zach Strauss. These guys are like the PR guys of America. It's, it's something else to, to, to imagine. Um, basically, I was helping him, supporting them, and you know, helping people as far as uh, folks who have like a story behind who they are, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a musician, or whatever the case may be, and to see if they want to be featured. Because you know, nowadays, or as, as it always, ha- always have been, to be featured in major, ma- major magazines and publications, you have to have some sort of story or some sort of background or something that's really uh, that, that moves substance. And obviously, you know, things uh, just, that's how things work. So with doing that, these guys were able to see who I was about and what I do. And just like that, I had a connection. And because of like the, 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 six, degrees of, the six degrees of separation, I had a connection and I came upon them as like a, a young up and coming influential person. And then because of that, I was asking, basically I was be able, to, I was able, I was, <clears throat> let me slow down. I was actually able to have the possibility of being featured. And I went upon with getting all the tags done, got everything done, got my information there. And I was, I was featured, man, it's the top 10. And I trust me, right? I can feel it. It's kind of like, it's kind of nervous just even speaking about it, but that's what happened, man. And um, I was able to just, it, it was something that I came to imagine. Just, so basically because of what I was doing, the work that I was doing for the people that I was doing it for, they actually helped me. And they saw what I was doing, I guess, behind closed doors, they didn't know um, behind closed doors, they didn't know like all that I was doing with the magazine and traveling and the influence and, and whatnot, and who I knew. And they was like, "Yo, man, you're a very influential person." And I, I was able to get that. I was being, I was able to get my name basically uh, put out there, man. It's it's hard to explain. I just it just happened, bro. It, like it just happened. I can't even explain it. It happened. Real talk. Hey, that that's awesome. Nothing nothing need to be explained. That's great. Thanks, bro. Appreciate no it. Oh, that's a month, man. So so then so. After you're on that list, uh, did you start getting more opportunities from it, or like did some did you like did anybody reach out to you? Like did someone see you on there and was like, I would like to work with him in this aspect or this part of his either East Coast magazine or like or like how or like maybe even the acting thing? Like I know you said you met so you did the theater early on in college and stuff in high school. How did that uh, where did that come about when you started to like try to do acting? Like as I, I don't know if you did it as like um, just like a side gig or like a side passion or something like that. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I got you, Frank. I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. Okay, so um, so when that once that happened, once that happened, um, uh, yeah, I started getting all these followers and people started reaching out to me. Um, and t- shoot, I'm trying to see if I can answer that properly. Uh, yeah, that people reached out to me. I actually became good friends with someone who was number one on that list. If you look it up, her name is Lisa Romano. She's the number gotcha. one life in the what'd you say? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah, I saw her name on the list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa's a, let me tell you something. I don't mean to get too crazy and excited, <laughs> but I do. Lisa Romano is a bad, it's a bad woman. <laughs> she's uh, mentally, she's one of a kind. Um, I was dealing, okay, not not to get too crazy, um, but so just I was able to get in touch with her, and we became good friends. We still are. Um, outside of that, yeah, she's a great life coach. I'm just saying, I'm going to say that. Uh, but um, just to move forward, I was able to, uh, how can I put this? Other, other podcasts started reaching out to me and people reached out to me to get me here and there, help me with this and that. So it was like a lot of networking opportunities. I, I began traveling a little more because I had other friends and other places. Other people reached out to me. 
it's it's crazy, man. I started getting more networking. Like it's, um, because of that, I was able to get in touch with someone who actually got me in touch with Kyle Norman. And Kyle Norman is a member of Jagged Edge. You know Jagged Edge, right? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we was able to get we just featured Jagged Edge, um, Kyle Norman on, on our cover. And uh, thank shout out to our COO, Shopping A Bird, who was able to feature um who was able to take care of that and interview him. Uh so so like I said, just doing all of that has got me where, where I am today. Um just like I said, just 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 that it was man, it's so much, bro. I could go on for a long time, but just to be really humble and, and to say it, bro. Um when when it when it came about, like bro, there was other opportunities that I could have taken upon measures and taken measures into, but I said nah, my discipline said no, because it's not for me. And if I was to do that. I would be, it would, it would, it would have brought me back, back, back down to, 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 to the gate to step one. And, you know, I don't want to go back to that. You know what I mean? And um, so, but it, there was a lot, it was like good and bad and ugly with that, man. You'd be surprised, man, just because you get something, you think something is good, but it would be, it would be people like, yo, man, come on back down here, man. We, we got some things we want you to do with this. Nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nah. <laughs> uh -huh. So, it, no, seriously, man. It's, it's, but um, to, to add value to it, it, it was just um that right there. That's what I was gonna say next. That right there made me see uh things in in, in a different world. Um, Chris, Chris uh Gra Graffiano, I his name is Graffiano. Uh, his name is Chris, and um he lives in North Jersey. He's very fluent. Because of that, I was able to get make friends with him. And it's like I'm I'm, I'm with good people with good hearts who are very uh, doing a lot of things positive things in life. Um. So uh, you know it's 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 done, it's done so much, um, and yeah, man, just just being able to be on that list, man, is um it's something I never expected, especially coming from where I came from. You know, not trying to seem like a victim, but just know where I came from is something that I I'm very grateful for, man. And um, it's uh it's it's it's, it's really real, man. Um, and the acting thing, um, going into that just to really touch into that really fast. I'll be honest with you, bro. Um, when I was in college, when I was back in you know in college at Mansfield. I, my my one of my 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 mentors and he was my, my my teacher also my boss I worked for when I was we're doing work study at Mansfield his name is Mark Polonia he's a part of the Polonia he's only owns the Polonia brothers which is a production company and basically he works with David Stelling who's a producer in Hollywood and they had a small film which was um what's the word I'm trying to think properly uh it was basically uh, a series a sequel to Cam Blood, the first one. I was a part of Cam Blood, the third in the series, Cam Blood First Slaughter. And it was basically based on college kids on the college campus in a college town who basically were uh, trying to go camp out at Camp Blood, which was the actual place where people were getting murdered at, murdered at. And there was an, an initial, uh, the plot was there was an initial um, an assignment given by the professor in the movie. My name was, I was Harvey in the movie. Uh, the only black kid at the college campus. It was funny, man. <laughs> and uh, it was just dope, though. You know what I mean? But um, obviously, got killed in the movie. But the uh, first one? No, I wasn't the first one. I wasn't the first. One. <laughs> <laughs> I was not the first one. I said, I told Mark, I said, Mark, I'm not getting killed first in this damn movie. <laughs> we're gonna break that. We're gonna break that generational curse, whatever that bullshit is. So, um, so to be honest with y'all, bros, um, how can I put this? Yeah, it was um, it was it was a great movie, and we went we went we went to a town. It was all filmed in Pennsylvania. The movie, with how the movie looks, you'd have thought it was like in um, Midwest or the Great Plains states, but now it was in Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, we uh, so just to move forward, that right there was what got me into IMDb. I have an official IMDb account, um, for my profile, and that's what kind of got me into the acting world. And now I'm working. I'm um, doing acting classes with Nakia Dillard, who's a highlight actor. You may know him. He's a, he's an actor on, on CW's Black Lightning. You've heard of Black Lightning? Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. He, he's a he's a prime actor on Black Lightning. He's an act. He was an actor on The Wire. Everybody remember The Wire? Oh uh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he's very no. He's act, he, he's actually if you've seen a movie called Concrete Cowboy, which was just filmed in Philadelphia based off the, the life of the Cowboys in uh, North Philadelphia on Ridge Avenue. Um, he actually helped and coach Idris Elba. So Nakia Diller, my acting coach, actually helps um with uh Idris, he works with Idris, Idris Elba. So uh, yeah, Elba. um so so yeah, that's what I'm doing. Man. That's my work right now, working on that and getting back and getting back to the film world. Um, so that is coming about, man. It's, it's all it's all working itself out. And uh, 
yeah, so that, that's how that came about to answer your, your question on that behalf, bro. Wow, dude, that's, you know, it's crazy because, yeah, it's you, Julius might have to talk to Josh about the acting thing because Julius himself is a guy <laughs> – was always mentioned he's like you know he's got like a like julius so you always like you always say like you know i kind of wish i did a little bit of acting on the side or something like that yeah man i mean it's it's being uh acting like just be more creative essentially um and, you know probably need to pull the trigger and like do this like acting class i've been putting off for years but um no i think it's acting is definitely one of the, those passions where like you, you got to go into it and kind of like learn the art and stuff like that so i think i'm gonna probably you know, do that at some point and kind of just, you know, get in. My middle school teacher was an, is an actor. He does a, a bunch of commercials. So like he's been, I've been talking to him and like kind of getting the, the load down on how he got started and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 Jules, can, can I say something, bro? Oh yeah, of course. Of course. May I ask you a question? Do you, um, so do you, do you want to get into acting or are you just something you just think of, or is it a thought or something you want to accomplish? So unfortunately, I mean, so unfortunately I have a lot of passions, but like, I just never follow through on things, but like acting, I mean, it's been one of the things on my mind of like, like things I would love to do kind of thing, but I just know like I need to go to, I, I got recommended to go to a school um, in the city um, that like, I should just, I should just do it if, if, like eventually. I, I wanted to do it a couple of years ago. I just, with work, I was just like, I just kind of put it off. I was just incorporate and just doing that. But I think goal wise based on like where my career is going it's like doing the podcast and just wanting to be more in the entertainment space it's something i should look more into you know and, and doing it that route essentially yeah my brother i will say this you know um i mean i give a, i'm gonna say a small little antidote um you know there was a man who thought he was uh, too old to do something and then at some point he started thinking the thought of him having the idea of thinking he was too old was the thought from five years prior to that thought, right? And then when that happened, he's like, well, in those five years, what did I do? Instead of just thinking about being too old to do something. And I'll be honest with you, bro. Um, whether it's age, whether it's a uh, purpose, whether it's uh, just the whole ordeal of the illusion of things we have to do, bro. You can do it, man. Just, I would say if I was you, man, just get right into it. Um, even if it takes just like 10 minutes a day, if you only have, look up this. I even got some connections if you need me to, man. I can connect with you. And um, you can, yo, bro, it's worth it, bro. I'm telling you, bro, where we, where we are right now in this in this world, right now in this in this society, COVID, whatever, this new digital age now, which is where it's looking like, bro, I'm telling you, man, film, film movies is about to make a comeback. Almost, it's almost like this is the roaring twenties. It's like nineteen twenties, like the uh, though those times are coming back. Like it's like it's like the re the, the, the rebirth. It's like a new renaissance period. I'm telling you, bro, it's like it's a rebirth of, of film, the film industry, and it's coming back um, with new yeah. faces. Bro, if I was you, bro, if I was you, bro, I would do it, bro. I got connections if you need it, bro. Just get into it, bro. I'm telling you, get into it, bro. You, bro, you may be an Oscar winner. Who knows? who knows man i mean there's a kid from my high school man who's a really talented actor and he's done a lot of movies and and, and stuff right now so he's been doing really great work so it's kind of been cool like look at his career knowing that like we went to the same high school and like he's doing like insane stuff but yeah i mean it's it's definitely possible and, and it's attainable but yeah of course but i think for right now like i love doing this podcast and like right. want to give a lot of effort and, and you know and kind of make this be you know take this to like new heights because uh, we from where we started it's it's kind of crazy the people that we've actually had on here and been able to like interview and they want to like talk to us like to be honest it's, it's been that's been amazing to be honest with you than anything right. else yeah right I, I love it yo yo i love it man i mean when i say like this is dope this this is dope <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, and that's just me man so i mean i didn't eat anything yet kind of fast <laughs> yeah. but yeah I'm, this podcast is, is good man i love it man i i just appreciate the fact that you guys are really uh you know listening and really letting letting me um speak because um other podcasts that i was on i have fun but right here with you guys i'm really being able to speak my mind and, like talk to you and tell you who i am and where i came from and where i'm going and what i'm about the why the where the who the what you know so i appreciate you guys real talk of course thank you we appreciate you Dude, how, how, and how was your uh, trip to Houston? You were in Houston recently? 
because we, we actually yeah, we actually uh we had on one of our guests we had on was uh donnie donnie houston uh he's a producer from houston he's produced songs for like slim thug and like paul wall so i know we had that so we had i had him on uh back in the summertime but we were asking him a lot about houston because i always me and julius I've, I've talked about this before like texas is a spot i i had thought about possibly moving to at one point but i just want to know how your trip was and how, how things are down there now because i know oh. they got that new gun law <laughs> it's like you can walk around with, uh, that's insane too by the way it's like you can walk around with a, a gun i guess without a permit is, is that that might be it i don't know whatever even either way how was the trip <laughs> <laughs> yo texas okay y'all ready for this yo yeah. texas i'm gonna be honest I'll be honest. I was, I was thinking, I'm thinking about moving down there, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm serious, bro. Okay. So Houston, how this, okay. So long story short, in case you folks don't know, um, I'm actually, how can I put this? I was with, let's just say uh, certain folks who are part of a certain high order. That makes sense. And when I, when I was with them, uh, pretty sure you heard of the Moors, right? You heard of the Moors, correct? Have you heard of the Moors? no wait 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 um wait, what, what, wait sorry what, who are they again? i know i i don't know why i'm blanking right now i, I feel like i know this word this it's a yeah. group uh yeah it's a collective of uh, like a collective of, of folks yeah that makes okay. sense gotcha not, not 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 to get too much of today i was just going to start with, with some folks that are a part of that collective and yeah. and i'm a part of the collective and long story short put this i um we was down there. We were fasting. Uh, we, were, we were practicing Ramadan. That makes sense. I'm still currently on. Um, and to be honest, you don't have to be Muslim to practice Ramadan. A lot of folks think you have to. It's just a, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a discipline to fast from food uh, and certain things. And I mean, I drink, I'm drinking some water, but you know, I have to keep myself, you know, uh, my, my thirst quenched. But long story short, you know, it's something. It's just a nice mindset to to uh, to, to develop into. But I was down there because of half because of that other half is, was to see Houston and for the second time because I was there back in October but let me tell you bro Houston is everything man it's uh it's one of those places where it's like it's a uh, it's a northeastern it's it's, a, it's, a, it's like it's like the great northeastern city kind of like Philly Jersey or like North uh New York Boston uh so, if you so to speak so to speak the DMV I don't consider the DMV the north but you know <laughs> that can <Yeah>. be bad. <laughs> <laughs> But what I was saying is um, Houston was like a touch of all of that because Houston is like a big mountain pot. So when I was there, I rarely ran into people from Houston. I ran into people from other parts of Texas, Louisiana, Atlanta, L.A., all around. But however, it's like a, it's, it, you can still see the Southern culture because when you go into like the South Side, oh, man, my brother, the South Side of Houston was really folks like, you know, black folks like, you know, I mean, Joe's. Folks who actually live on a damn farm and it was horses and stuff. I'm like, so you look at South Philly, you look at uh, South Camden or or um, the South Side Bronx, you like, hold on, this is the hood, right? This is this is it's a predominantly uh inter inner city down there. Ain't no damn inner city, man. It was just uh, people on farms and it was spread out. You see people with the old Cadillac grills and it was it was some down south country intermixed. It was just a culture shock, man. You people, um, folks down there in uh, in, in Houston uh, are really uh, social, especially the women. They're very social. They open their mind up. They'll listen to you. They'll, they'll 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 know that you're not from there, and it's just like it's different. Like the brothers I was talking to was cool, man. Um, it's good good food, great quality. Um, it's kind of it's, it's, it wasn't as hot when I was there as as as, as it can be from what I've learned, but it was uh, it was different. It was more so a little chilly, but it was um Houston was definitely cool, man. Definitely East Town, and I'm a fan of East Town. The old school R and B group. Rest in peace, Dino. Gotcha, man. Yeah, man. I, I, yeah. I, I think, yeah. The South is, uh, is interesting, man. I, I thought about going there myself because, well, number one, just weather right off the bat, without even, because like, I, like our winters aren't terrible, but like I just, I like a nice like spring climate. I know that obviously they're gonna get the hottest weather in the summer and whatever, but like if that's just that's one thing on my list. Number two, yeah, like you said, friendliness, like people being friendly um obviously up here like it's not as friendly but i mean there are people that are friendly but it you know usually it's your friends you're talking to up here it's not you know like i don't say hello to strangers in the morning i don't like go like go good morning man what's up how you doing yeah but, yeah uh, 
yeah like so stuff like that and then also man like i might be considered exotic down there because i'm an italian guy from northeast northeast go down there a girls like there's not a lot of you, not a lot of you down there man so they might be like oh it might be fucking uh might be a good time if i go down there oh, <laughs> over here you're like, gonna, oh, be, another you're gonna be joe exotic over there frank exotic frank exotic <laughs> yeah man. that's funny <laughs> yo yo let me say oh oh let me say this let me say this speaking about exotic Man, the woman down there, man, they love a man from up north. Let me say that. I think I said it before. So, Frank, you probably, Frank and Jules, y'all probably get all the honeys down that piece, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, that'd be fantastic. I got I to gotta take a vacation down there. <laughs> oh, um, but, yeah, no, bring this, bring this back on track. Uh, so, so what, what are your plans, like, going forward for this year as far as just, like, whether it's you personally, uh, whether it's the magazine or just, or, or if you have, or if you have like another project that you want to work on, um, like what, what are you, what are your plans for like, I guess, 2021? Okay. To answer your question, Frank, um, I'm going to tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to tell you guys something that I didn't want to tell anybody. Um, so that's why I really respect you guys. And I appreciate you having me on this show on this show. I need to start enunciating my words. Man. Sorry about that, man. Um, so to be honest with you, I'm working on something and I promise to get you guys a copy of it. I'm working on a book, man. Nice. And this book is, uh, to be honest with you, bro, uh, it's not, it's not going to be an average book. It's going to be um, like an atlas, um, an atlas to follow. Because um, what I've been going through was like a journey and we've all gone through journeys, but I have my own journey. I'm going to put it on, on, on words. It's actually, the main script is basically done. I'm just editing, editing it, uh, getting in touch with certain, you know, uh, companies that, that help you, you know, basically companies that help you get it printed and whatnot. Um, so yeah, man, I'm working on a book right now and it's going to deal with life and Atlas. It's an Atlas, man. And um, so that's something big right now. And I'm trying to work on, uh, and I'm just, um, as far as 2021, you know, just as far as myself personally, that's just that's basically the focus right now. Um, every each and every day, I'm working on becoming full vegan. I've been eating, you know, night. I, mean, I have like what you call a whole a whole food diet. A whole food diet is when you eat ninety percent plant based and ten percent is like junk or whatever. But it's a good balance for your estrogen and and, uh, and testosterone. So I'm working on like just balancing myself health health wise, and just just lint, like staying towards that. I've been slowing down my drinking a lot. Like I said. I used to drink toxically. So I'm basically uh, a personal transformation. That's what I'm going through. And a lot of my books that I read, I have next to me, I said before, uh, we'll do a show before we end, whenever that is, um, has been helping me. So I've been reading more books, more books, more books. I just read and read and read as much as I can to, um, to personally make myself a better person than when I was the moment before. And um, yeah, and that, uh, just getting right with the, the acting, but the project is the book, to be honest with you, like I said. Um, and uh, just just working hard, man, and just trying to be positive and helping others, man. Because I at one point I was getting help and not as much help, so I do my best to try to be to to be the difference and help others as much as I possibly can. Uh, the magazine, we're just uh, moving forward for a lot of things. We're just trying to we're we're still finding our niche. It's, it's crazy from the outside looking in. People might think, wow, this is big, but we're still finding our niche, and we're um we're still just finding our two selves in the mag and really branding ourselves more and more and more and growing. Um, and before I, that, that pinnacle hits. So, so I'm just, I'm just really still moving forward and getting things in place, uh, in the place that, that it should be. Um, kind of like the old Kiamis, I think you said Chiamis, C-I-C-H-I-A-M-U-S. It's like a, it's like an end deal, but almost, um, basically where I'm staying on point with the point on. Gotcha. Okay. Dude, man, that's, man, that's positive, man. That's what we need. We yeah. need it this Sunday. We need, <laughs> need positivity uh, this entire year because everything is, uh, I mean, everything you see in, in media is, uh, there's a lot of negativity, man, everywhere. So it's it's good yeah. to have a fresh breath of air, man, and like have you on to discuss everything you're going through what, and what you've been through and, and where and how you came out on the other side of the tunnel, like after so much stuff that you've, that you had to like uh, overcome. Um yeah, dude, I feel like uh, for sure we'd like love to have you on again, man. I feel like maybe there should have been a, maybe there should be a part two to this. Like, I feel like you have so much. I know you're saying like uh, you got like a lot. You have like a lot you can talk about and stuff like that. And uh, but yeah, man, we're we're gonna be following you for sure um, to see what you're 
next step is and definitely would love to like have you back on again and to talk about Ooh. more man i'm bringing you a bro bros let's do it I, I listen man i appreciate you i'm all about it let's do it man let's stay connected for life i'm all yeah. about it man um uh-huh. you need me a second time third time fourth time shoot uh an infinity time let's do it. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's just like so with us, like we've had a lot of guests, but um it's interesting because a lot of times we don't know them beforehand. So we're kind of we're kind of getting to know them as we talk to them. And right. then later on, you maybe you get a little bit looser in the in there in the interview or or something happens where like, yeah, you could always there's there's a lot of content that you could you could touch on. And uh but yeah, we've we've like talked to other people before. We're like, yeah, man, like we'll probably we're gonna actually we probably will end up having like repeat guests at a certain point. Um, mm-hmm. We are early in our, uh, in our careers as podcasters, but yeah, like it's, it's an, it's an interesting format. Like you got to kind of just, you get to know somebody like we, we literally just met Joshua, like we are on here. <laughs> like it's not, there yeah. wasn't like, there was a couple conversations beforehand, but uh, that's, I think that's the new thing, unique thing about us in that aspect is that we have people on that. We literally just like, I reached out to them or they reached out to me and like, we make it happen because we want to have that conversation and we're just like, Hey, we're just meeting somebody. We're, we're basically like happen. We're having like an icebreaker for like an hour, but it's where it works. <laughs> it works out. Like, icebreaker. That's what it was. Frank, I don't mean to cut you in. That's remember when I was trying to find a word. Work when thing. I, icebreakers was we had every class with me and Burnham icebreakers. Yeah. Icebreakers, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but yeah, man. Oh, sorry. No, I was saying y'all guys are the greatest. I love this show. This is a dope show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll to, uh, I mean, my sister lives in Philadelphia. Um, so maybe oh. like, yeah, she, she's, she's, she went to Temple University. Oh, Temple. Yo, I'm not too far. Yo, Temple is a dope school. Yeah, she went there. She's been living in since, she's actually been living in Philly for, uh, I think it's actually, it's like eight or nine years. So she's been there right after college. She stayed. So I was going to say, Len, if we ever, if we're ever, and I know Julius once in a while, like he visited Philly recently for his birthday. Okay. So yeah, if we're ever um, going to be going there, I'm going to be obviously going to visit her at some point. Like we'll definitely like hit you up if we're going to be there and maybe we'll meet you in person at some point and we'll just like finally get it. Maybe we get a drink or whatever we can do. We'll figure something out. Hey, 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 hey. let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Let's not, yeah, let's do it. Let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. Talk about it. Be about it, drink about it, live about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man, it's um, definitely a pleasure, Josh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Time, yeah. Bro. yeah, guys, no. this is. Oh my bad. No, you got, you got. No, no, no. I'm listening. I'm gonna go. Where you go? What you about to say? I'm I was listening. just gonna do the outro, but yeah, no. You, you got. If you have something else to say, that's that's fine too. Oh, oh I'll, I'll be okay. I promise, I'll be quick. Um, you know, um, to whoever whoever's gonna see this. Um, I'm taking it. You're gonna. This is gonna be on Anchor and all that other stuff, or not? So we're. It's gonna be on uh, SoundCloud, Apple Music, or sorry, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, okay. uh, and uh, yeah, and Google Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. And we, okay. Um, and you'll we'll probably upload this on the YouTube as well. So. Yeah, YouTube as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, bro. Perfect. I appreciate it. I say that because so I can share it to my some people that I that, that connect with, so I can tell them about you guys and to see the show. You know what I'm saying? Um, perfect. I just, I just want to leave off to um, whoever's reading and watching, like I said, uh, cause I know the whole purpose of us talking was to talk about, you know, who I, who I am and where I come from and just what, 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 what my life is about and, you know, just what I'm about. And I will say this, I want to show this man. So whoever's watching this man, these are the books that I've read, uh, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard and Kai is something else. It talks about clarity, energy, necessity, productivity, influence, and courage. Those six habits will make you a better person. Uh, when I was when I was in jail, I read this book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. The guy is the guy is one of a kind. Let me tell you that. Uh, he's basically these seven habits um, will help you with powerful lessons and and, uh, and personal change. Uh, basically, empathy, knowing how to understand others before being understood first. Once you can master that, you can be able to be able to uh, to know people genuinely, genuinely, and to uh, just to understand why somebody is the way they are. Instead of being biased from gossip, like, yeah, he's crazy or she's crazy, or but you don't know why they're crazy. You gotta know why they're crazy. Um, body language, big. This right here has helped me in many ways. That Dr. Glenn Wilson, uh, eight, got eight dollars at um, Barnes Nobles. 
taught me of how to read people, see people you could tell who really likes you, who's into you, who really is actually infatuated with your success, your life, who's envious of you, who's, who's all that kind of stuff. You can pick up on that. And that can actually save your life in many ways. Um, the role that's traveled, I'm Scott Peck. Still reading it. This guy's something else, man. He talks about discipline. Guys, God, I'm Scott Peck is one of a kind, man. Um, I'm currently reading this, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. Guys, different. Um, first book I've ever really read fully. Uh, entrepreneur gave this to me when I was 15 years old, working at Value City in Hazleton. When my mom was, uh, you know, working there as supervisor. And the magic of thinking big is uh, it's one of a kind. It talks about um, how to capitalize your mind. Um, and uh, lastly, whoo, this book right here is something else. 40 Law, I'm sorry, the author of the 40 Laws of Power. Robert Greene, this book is The Laws of Human Nature. Man, guys, that guy, that guy is a, that guy is an alien, man. And I've always tried to look up dictionary words, you know, to better my vocabulary, like Malcolm X used to do. But um, that's about it, man. Um, these books has books have changed my life. Once it wasn't for books, I would have just I'd be, I don't know where I would be, man. So I thank you guys. Uh, and you guys as well. You, you guys are like a book. You guys are two characters I'm learning from and I'm actually involved with. And the book is going to continue to move forward, you know. So thank you for letting me be a part of your book, Frank and Joe's podcast. Thank you for letting me be in a part of chapter seven or one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this has been this has been uh, episode number twenty one uh, of the Frank and Jules podcast. We, this is Joshua Pollitt. Um, we're definitely going to have him on in the future again, man. And uh, just it was just crazy to learn about your journey and we're going to keep following you and we'll definitely be in touch and hopefully we'll be able to meet in person at one point in the future and in your future. All right. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon, Josh. Watch the VMAs, praying one day I'll go and touch the stage. I need to do this for my family's sake. Mind going insane up on my slowest days. Start to pit my drunk nights over sober days. Life is getting messy like a bowl of bowling nays. Grandma, why me going back to school? Yeah, I heard it pays. Shit, I can't throw away my dreams. Yeah, I don't know what this means to me. But ain't y'all gonna stop believing me? The shit I deserve When it comes to what I done You see the tip of the bird Y'all was never with me For the blood, sweat, and the work So I'ma put it on myself And I'm keeping my word Confidence on How could be mistaken for birds They sleeping on me Let them die Now I'll wake up my first We ain't talking anymore Cause what we dealing with hurts She blaming on my dreams And that's making it worse This shit be absurd These days I sit back and observe People always talking this, that, and the third Say they down the ride Till shit go occur Like... Said you had my back, now you back turning. Motherfucker really do me on the back burner. Used to come and watch my games down in that turner. Then you stopped coming, I caught on like a fast learner. Made me lost a connection like it's a bad server. Popping perks, dudes and weights on me, it was fat burners. Kid is always on the run, cause the past hurt him. Hope you hear this and feel it in your chest like a crack sternum. Uh, I just need a place where I always feel safe there. It's fun and games like a state fair And no one coming for my way cause I ain't got on fake hair I be in the sunset yelling take care You on the street where I left and you can wait there But I ain't never coming back cause I hate here It's been too long since I had a great year Me and music got the deepest connection And every time I write a song it help me beat this depression Fuck it that ain't working Thought it's suicide it ain't worth it With my luck I kill myself and come back as the same person means to me when are y'all gonna stop